Hello and welcome to another episode of World Beyond Belief. I am, as usual, am Paul Marco, and we're very honored to have Janice Barcello back. The last time we had her, she spoke about birth trauma and the problem with Western medicine, which we cover a lot on this channel. Now she's coming back with expanding her purview to the whole notion of sex and how they control society through sex. We saw an incredible presentation that she made. I'm very anxious to have her on. Welcome to the world beyond belief, Janice. I'm so happy to be back with you, Paul. Thank you so much. It's good to reconnect and talk about these important things. Thanks for helping me get the information out there. Very important topic. It's mind control that we're all subjected to. So where would you like to start? Well, I guess I'd like to start by explaining to people why this topic interests me, you know, the topic of human sexuality. And the best place to start with my reasoning for my interest is, is uh, based on my own conception, uh, which was in the back seat of a car at a drive-in movie theater. My parents were teenagers at the time, and they were having sex this was in 1957 when I was conceived. This was the very leading edge of the pornography movement in the United States. Um, and the fact that uh, Alfred Kinsey had just released his, um, his two books on um, male sexuality and the other one on female sexuality. And I believe there was a, an intense effort to try to control the minds of the people that exist to this day in terms of sexuality and that encouraged young adults to have sex in um, what I would consider a very vulgar way. So the reason this interests me so much is because when we are making children as a side effect of fleshy activity, in other words, as a side effect of carnal impulse, instead of a desire to create life. The children, number one, will suffer because most of them are not wanted. The births will be very difficult. Um, and the spirituality and spiritual capacities of the child will be altered as a result of the lack of parental consciousness during conception. And sometimes it's a pornographic consciousness and we should talk about that. So it's deeply affected my life, being conceived haphazardly and gestating in a womb where I was not wanted and born to parents who did not love each other and um, all that that brings to a child's life um, and even to uh, my later capacity to create healthy relationships um, as a teenager and a young adult. Um, so all of this really, really affects us. and. From the perspective of the controllers, those who are enthusiastically encouraging us to have the, these crazy sexual encounters all the time, um, it's very promising for them to be able to alter us spiritually, to alter our spiritual capacities, and also to alter our capacity to love. Um, and this is the, the biggest thing. I think we're living in a time based on what's happening to children at the earliest stages of life, that it's becoming increasingly difficult uh, for them to experience authentic and enduring human love. And I can't think of a more serious uh, issue. So that's why this topic interests me. Right. It interests me, too, because I think sex is, I mean, all of us are controlled by TV and the media, but all of us are controlled by the sexual mores of the culture that we were given and how it's kind of pulled us around and made us something that maybe God didn't intend. What do you think about that? I think that's absolutely right. And um, if you do, you know, I've done a tremendous amount of research to, to, to discover how they did this. How did they change 
our perception of human sexuality and our behaviors. They actually have succeeded in changing our behavior. And what was the approach that they took in order to effectuate these changes? And it actually begins uh, with the Rockefeller Foundation, we should not be surprised, no. uh, funding the research of Alfred Kinsey. Alfred Kinsey was a sadomasochist and a pedophile. He was also deeply involved with what's called sex magic, um, big fan of Aleister Crowley, um, and using sexual energy for purposes of uh, altering our reality. But his research, quote unquote, research, research. actually involved hiring pedophiles to sexually stimulate very young children, as young as five months old, uh, around the clock, to determine how many quote-unquote orgasms they could have right. in that period of time. So um, these children obviously were, t were tied down or restrained in some way by the pedophiles who were recording the orgasms, how often they happened, how long they were. Um, according to Kinsey, orgasm included things like uh, trying to beat off the person that was raping them. Kinsey called it the partner, trying to beat off the partner, having convulsions, crying, um, all of these things Kinsey assured us were actually orgasms in young children. Um, I'm not kidding. If, if I read Amazing. you, if I read you some of the things that he that he said were orgasms. Let me see if I could find this. Extreme tension with violent convulsions, sudden heaving and jerking of the whole body, whole body or parts of it spasmodically twitching, groaning, sobbing, violent cries sometimes with an abundance of tears, especially among young children, extreme trembling, collapse, loss of color, fainting, right? Now get this, he says, some boys suffered excruciating pain and screamed if movement was continued, but members of this group tried to fight away from the partner and make violent attempts to avoid climax Although they derived definite pleasure. Right. Sounds from like the torture. Sounds like torture. They were they were being tortured. That's exactly they were being sexually tortured. Um, and Kinsey perceived that as uh, orgasm, as sexual excitement and sexual pleasure. Kinsey was insane. I mean he did the most insane thing that I'm aware of that he did was he tied a rope around his scrotum. He threw the rope over a pipe that was on the ceiling in his basement, climbed up on a chair, and then kicked the chair out from under him. He had his hand on one end of the rope and his balls on the other. And he hung himself from the pipe. He hung himself from his balls. That's okay, and he had it filmed. He, he did things like stick a urethra, uh, a toothbrush, up into his urethra oh. and filmed it for his pornography collection. So he was extremely sadistic uh, and masochistic and insane. He was obviously, to me, he's obviously a victim of satanic ritual abuse, right. and he was being used to effectuate an agenda. All right, that agenda being to change the sexual mores of the American people, to change the sexual behavior of the American people, to try to convince them that children are sexual from birth and that they somehow benefit from adults having sex with them. All right, one of the things that Kinsey also did was he convinced us that um, women are pretty much like cats and heat. You know, we just want to go from partner to partner and have as much uh, intercourse as we possibly can because we're after the pleasure. Uh, but, you know, the difference between humans and cats is that when cats do it, they're interested to reproduce. You see, but according to Kinsey, human women, they don't care about children. Children are a burden. Really, all they want is to have sexual pleasure. 
Um, and, and not only that, but this is good for them. It's good for them to seek as much sexual pleasure as they can. It's okay for them to have as many different partners as they can. And, um, all of this is healthy and beneficial. And in fact, according to Kinsey and the Rockefeller Foundation, um, this is really the way the Creator designed us to be, is to have as much sex as we possibly can, because really everything is about sexual pleasure. We can see this throughout um, psychiatry too. People like Freud uh, coming up with the theory that all of our behavior is really based on an interest to have sex with our parents. <laughs> So there has been an agenda. It's been an orchestrated agenda. And I, I, I'm finding it painful to say that it's clear that this has been orchestrated by Luciferian Jews who want to promote Luciferian expressions of human sexuality. <clears throat> so if we look deeply into how the Luciferians behave, they are engaged in um, orgies, for example, Absolutely. as part of their part of their religion. They are engaged in raping children as part of their religion, uh, sodomizing children, um, and we can go deep into this topic of sodomy because it's a very important one. Right. Uh, they're interested to sodomize children between two and four because sodomy does something to the nerves at the base of the spine and paves the way for that child to develop multiple personalities later down the road. Um, so these Luciferians are extremely interested to normalize these expressions right. of Luciferian sexuality so that our entire culture has become more and more with each passing year an expression of Luciferian sexuality. We are completely um, overwhelmed by pornographic influence, by sodomy. I mean, I myself have been influenced by pornography, for example, in my, in my 20s. I'm almost 60 now. But when I was married to my first husband, I actually let him penetrate me anally because I had watched pornography. We both had watched pornography, and we thought that that was normal. Um, in fact, it is not normal. In fact, sticking a penis in an orifice where excrement comes out is disgusting. And it is a major uh, fuck you to the creator. Right. Okay, who has designed this beautiful um, organ to merge with a vaginal wall that's attached to a loving woman for the purpose of creation, creating life. Right. But when you put it in where excrement comes out, you're really saying, right. you know, this is shit. Your, your life creating program is shit. I don't care about your life creating right. program. All I care about is sexual pleasure and I'm going to get it however, however I need to get it. Um, yeah. So, and that's a very Luciferian approach, you see, to sexuality. Well, that... um, and we've got, okay. Go ahead. I... I just think this is the elephant in the room. We're controlled by Luciferian <laughs> sex cults and everybody dances around it and you're the only person that's coming right at it. You know the aprons that the Freemasons wear? That's to cover yeah. their most important thing, their organ. It's all about sex. Oh yeah? Everything is about sex. Yeah. They're Luciferian yeah. sex yeah. cults. <clears throat> I'm reading an excellent. I'm reading an excellent book right now called *The Holy Serpent of the Jews* um, by Tex Mars, which is going very deeply into the sex cult uh, piece. It was probably brought forward through um, Sabbatai Zevi, yes. I think, in the 1600s. 1666. Um, was, Oddly enough, 1666. Um, right on. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's been followed through for the last several centuries to the extent that the Talmud itself, you know, says that it's okay for Jews to have sex with three-year-old children and to sodomize nine-year-old boys. So we've got a very serious um, issue 
in terms of this Luciferian cult uh, being normalized in American society and elsewhere around the world. And of course, we're seeing extreme versions of sexuality. I don't think there's ever been a time where it's been quite as bad as it is now, where you got people like Miley Cyrus, you know, yeah. parading around the stage with the giant dildo and right. the star of David around her body and um, just really in your face that this is, that the beauty of God's design, which has to do with love, doesn't matter. You know, what right. matters is physical pleasure as much as you can get. It doesn't matter how you get it. It doesn't matter who you abuse to get it. It's okay to rape animals. I mean, bestiality and necrophilia are also allowed in the Talmud, okay? And they're also quite common amongst these Luciferian cults. And this is something we absolutely need to be aware of and to separate ourselves from. And I want to stress that with all love in my heart for people that are born into the Jewish bloodlines, it's never been more important for them to separate themselves from this Jewish cult. And it is a Luciferian. Judaism is, has become, I don't know if it always was, but since Sabbatai Zevi, yes. it most definitely has become a Luciferian cult. Um, and like with anybody that's born into a Luciferian bloodline, Kurt Barker, Jay Parker, Kathy O'Brien, I mean, all of these victims of satanic ritual abuse are seeking to separate themselves from those cults and to expose the cults and to um, do everything that they can to make sure that these cults do not succeed in their evil agenda, right? To take over the minds and the sexual behavior of mankind. So this is very important for the Jewish people in particular at this time, especially because the Jewish people suffer as a result of what the, the elite members of this cult do. I mean, there's been 109 expulsions of the Jewish people yeah. over the last few thousand years. And so just being affiliated with it puts people in danger. You know what I mean? Right. So it's important for Jewish people to understand this and to speak out about it and to uh, try to do everything that they can to separate themselves from it and certainly not to expose their children to the sadistic rituals like um, circumcision, for example. Uh, I'll just mention something else very quickly. There, there was a ritual in New York City last year in September called Caparo, a Jewish ritual where they slaughtered 50,000 chickens. And um, they waved these chickens over their head in an attempt to put their evil deeds into the chickens. And they believe they'll have a good life if they do this. And you can see in some of the pictures, not only the streets of Brooklyn running red with blood, but the children, the Jewish children who are forced to witness this sadistic ritual and participate in this ritual are horrified. You, you, can, you see them, right. you know, recoiling at what they're witnessing. And um, th this to me is a form of satanic ritual abuse. The children are being forced to participate in a satanic ritual. Um, and of course, it, it is very likely that it can contribute to the splitting of the psyche right. and the creating of an altered personality. So this is a very dangerous cult, and it is very extensive right now around the world. And it's important for us to understand how they operate so that we can protect ourselves and our children from it. Right. Well, yeah. <clears throat> I know that what we've... They've, they've started the LGBTQ community, and they usually spell it with a plus, because I think they're making room for pedophilia and bestiality in that. So we're really going uh -huh, exactly. going down the chute here in terms of any any semblance of morality. I mean, my generation was very much corrupted. I mean, your generation, you know, we were 
very much corrupted by Kinsey and Hugh Hefter was a, which was a who was a psychologist by the way. He knew exactly what he was doing, and uh, we were just led along, and our culture was transformed. I mean, if you look at the people of my mother's and father's era, um, uh, Nat King Cole, I'm thinking, uh, uh, Ginger Rogers, Fred Astaire, very classy. Uh, but then, you know, in our in our uh, time, there was uh, movies like Bob. Ted, Carol, and Alice, and uh, um, Stepford Wives, and all these where they're starting to pervert the, uh, now it's gotten to this point. Yeah, of course, Woody Allen movies also contributed yeah. to that, you know. Um, it's interesting you mentioned that you have no psychologist, I did not know that. The, the psychiatric uh, profession has had a huge influence in the promotion of these perversions. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, the American Psychological Association recently published a DSM manual, the Diagnostic Statistical Manual, right? This is the Psychiatric right. Bible. Um, and in that, in that latest manual, they put uh, pedophilia as a sexual orientation instead of a mental disorder. Right. And people called them on it right away. They were like, what is going on here? And the people at the APA said, oh my, we made a mistake. Certainly we didn't mean to say it was a sexual orientation. Of course it's a mental disorder. We'll go in and correct that. But you can see the very subtle attempts right. at mainstreaming and normalizing having sex with children. And of course, bestiality is also on the agenda as you mentioned, in Germany, uh, which has been almost wholly taken over by this Luciferian uh, cult called, called Judaism, um, they have legalized bestiality brothels. And I, put, I talked about this in my presentation where dogs are like, their legs are taped together and um, they can't move, you know, but people can come up and stick their penises inside the dogs. Um, so... We have extreme mental illness. I mean, it's extreme. We have in the schools right now, <clears throat> I, I need to find this quote because children in school are being given books, okay? And within the books are some extremely perverted things um, like normalizing uh, sex with animals. So for example, Let's see if I could find this particular quote. Okay. Planned Parenthood is recommending a book called Our Bodies, Ourselves. Oh. Right? This book is arguing that sexual fantasies are healthful, healthy, and it gives the following example of a healthy fantasy for a girl. Are you ready for this fantasy? The girl says, I fantasize about making love with horses because they are very sensuous animals, more so than cows or pigs. They are also very male animals. So here we have a book being given out in schools, all right, to children probably 11, 12, 13 years old, normalizing a fantasy having sex with a horse? Right. Really? Really? Yeah. Of course, there's nothing normal about this. It's outrageous that Planned Parenthood is trying to normalize it. But who funds Planned Parenthood? The Rockefeller Foundation. Okay. Who is creating these sex edu education curriculums? Planned Parenthood funded by the Rockefeller Foundation. It's all, it's all one big happy circle of manipulation. And the manipulation is now being targeted to younger and younger children where five-year-old children right now are learning about orgasm, masturbation. Okay, in one of the books for children, there's a picture of an adult sexually stimulating an infant in the crib. Incredible. It's, out, it's outrageous. It's absolutely sick. And for people to send their kids to school is extremely dangerous. This, this particular picture 
of the of the adult sexually stimulating the child it says underneath the picture describing an or or an orgasm and it's described like this for the children it's a difficult feeling to describe but if you can um, imagine a gentle tingly sort of tickle that starts in your stomach and spreads all over that will give you some idea of what orgasm is. And this is their teaching to children, very young children, four and five years old in kindergarten. So it's, it's extreme. The, the United Nations has made the determination that these young children should be learning about masturbation, five-year-olds, about abortion. They should be taught explicit sex acts about same-sex relationships, about sexually transmitted diseases at five years old. Of course, the UN is wholly controlled by the Luciferians. The United Nations is a Luciferian organization. Absolutely. So promoting Luciferian expressions of sexuality is part of what they're, they're here to do. Right. I can also say that... Um, older children in sixth grade, ninth grade, they're learning about rape. They're learning, they're being conditioned to um, be sexually aroused by rape scenes. And I could read you another excerpt if you're interested. <laughs> sure, we're interested. All right, there's a book <clears throat> called 19 Minutes that was given to ninth graders in an honest, honors English class. All right, so here they're in English class. They're being given a book to read that's mandatory reading for the class. And inside the book, here's a scene. Hold on to your seats. He kissed her so hard that it hurt. Oof, she said, pushing at him. Relax, Max murmured, and then he sank his teeth into her shoulder. He pinned her hands over her head and ground his hips against hers. She could feel his erection against her stomach. It wasn't the way it normally was, but Josie had to admit that it was exciting. She couldn't remember ever feeling so heavy, as if her heart were beating between her legs, because we all know that's where the heart is, right? Yeah. Um, she clawed at Matt's back. To, she clawed at his back to bring him closer. Yes, he groaned and pushed her thighs apart. And then suddenly Matt was inside her, pumping so hard that she scooted backward on the carpet, burning the back of her legs. Wait, Josie said, trying to roll away beneath him. But he clamped his hand over her mouth and drove harder and harder until Josie felt him come. Semen, sticky and hot, pulled on the carpet beneath her. So welcome to ninth grade honors English class, Jeez. where you're learning about rape in a book that is ostensibly have nothing to do with sexuality. And when they had a, a meeting about this with the parents, the parents were very upset one of the fathers was arrested at this meeting for going over the two-minute limit. Whoa. So this is not a safe time to have children in school of any age. Yeah. Because this kind of film is getting, you know, they're sliding it in in places where parents wouldn't really know that it's happening. Wow, amazing. It reminds me of a, a sign I saw a German girl, girl holding up when the Islamic invasion came in, and it said, I'd rather be raped than racist. So we've got a culture. Oh my, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I was. Well, I, that's totally, you know, these people are so mind-controlled, or they're working. First of all, all of these refugees are being paid to get to these primarily white countries. I, I don't know how deep you want to go into this topic, but there is an agenda to destroy the white race. Absolutely. And this agenda is being moved forward by those we call Luciferian Jews. 
So they hate whites. They do not consider themselves white. They consider themselves a completely different species, as a matter of fact. And they despise the white race and want to destroy the white race. And the way that they want to do this is by getting us to interbreed with people of other races. They're doing it in a variety of ways, but flooding primarily white Christian countries, they also hate Christians, with um, Muslims, brown skin, black skin people, is part of the way they think they're going to be able to destroy the white race. And so all of these so-called refugees are being funded. They're being financed right. to travel into these countries and to do what they're doing, including holding up absurd signs. I'd rather be, I'd rather be raped than racist. That's you know, the, the agenda behind this is the most racist agenda imaginable because it has as its purpose to destroy whites. Right. But whites can't be racist. <laughs> but whites can't be racist. Whites are never allowed to be racist. Right. That's absolutely out of the question. We can never have anything to say about anybody, you know, whether or not they're raping, whether or not they're really wanting us dead. We're not allowed to say it. You know, we're not allowed to say, I got banned from Facebook again for 30 days recently because I posted an article about the impact of pornography on uh, young on children, right, younger than 15, right. the impact on the brain. And in my comments, I mentioned that the Jews control pornography. Well, you know, that's all you need to say right. for the people who are controlling Facebook to say you're not allowed to say that, and now you can't say anything. Right. Well, you know who Since rules you. You know who rules you by the people you're not allowed to con uh, to criticize. I think what we should do, what we should move back into uh, pornography and how that has really affected, well, it's, it's reshaped the culture in my lifetime um, and how it started and now it's escalated to uh, an amazing major portion of, uh, of lifestyle and, and everything you encounter. I, it's, Indeed. I, it's it, it's it, it's a it, it's an insidious thing. Let me just tell you my experience. It's an insidious yeah, thing okay. because um, it puts you on a, what's called a hedonistic treadmill. So what satisfies you today, not going to satisfy you tomorrow. What satisfies you tomorrow is not. So you keep pushing pushing the boundaries. That's why these sexual perversions that are now popping up aren't. They're not. A, appalling to people because people are looking for new types of stimulation. You know more about it than I do. They've been, they've been desensitized, in other words, to um, having natural expressions of human sexuality. And it is these extreme perversions, and they get more extreme, as you said, right, with time that uh, are triggering orgasms. Which are, which are, you know, when you masturbate repeatedly to these images, it actually changes the brain. It releases what's called excitotoxins and creates neurological highways that need to be fed again and again and again um, with more extreme expressions in order to achieve a similar level of sexual excitement. The saddest part of this is we have boys, especially as young as nine or ten, um, who are habitually masturbating to pornography and who have never had an experience of true human connection or what love actually feels like. So orgasm and love are two very, very different things, very, very different things, but boys in particular are being programmed uh, for orgasm, what I call dissociative sex. So sex that means that they're not connected to their heart, they're not connected to their spirit, they're not connected to another person, they're basically just whacking it off to Lucifer. Uh -huh. That's what pornography is. Right. Um, and they're 
they're using their life creating energy in service to the Luciferian agenda. And of course, there are beings that are feeding off of the sexual energy of these children and of, even of adults. Um, but it's particularly insidious with the children whose brains are literally changing as a result of this pornographic right. addictions. They have addictions by the time they're 14, 15. They're speaking of having erectile dysfunction before they're 18 years old. They can't, oh. they can't uh, get an erection with a, with a person. You know, sex, sex with the woman, they speak of it as feeling extremely foreign. Like they just wow. couldn't, couldn't figure it out. Um, so th this is, the other thing about this, the brain, is that uh, it's something happens to the frontal lobes with repeated orgasm to pornography, and the frontal lobes actually shrink. They become hypertrophy as a result of these erototoxins. And the frontal lobes are sort of like the braking system, right? So if we are in a situation that's questionable, we will ask the question whether it's appropriate to get violent or not, okay? The frontal lobes are kind of in charge of that. We'll ask the question, is it appropriate for me to like watch pornography at work, right. all right? If the frontal lobes are atrophied, which they are, with porn addicts. That means that everything's going to run without the brakes on. So the violent impulses are going to be running wild. The impulse to watch pornography is not going to, they can't control it. People are losing their jobs. They're losing their relationships. They're losing everything in their lives because they can't stop watching pornography. Right. It's become such an addiction. Um, and this is in part because of the brain damage that's caused. And it's very interesting because circumcision also causes the hypertrophy of the frontal lobes. So the boys, Israeli boys, Jewish boys, American boys, because um, circumcision has been mainstreamed here in the U.S. as a result of the Jewish takeover of the medical system. Um, all of these men, they make up 20% of the population worldwide. Circ circumcision is only done to 20% of men total. 80% uh, are not cut. But in any event, these men are attacked in infancy, right? They're genitally tortured, straight out of the gate, and mutilated, altering their brain. And then they are bombarded with pornography at a very young age. If you put a cell phone in your kid's hand, let's say it's seven years old or eight years old, they're going to have pornography. They're going to have access right. to pornography. And um, these teenagers are talking about how when they're on Facebook, the porn pops up on the side of the screen. See, that is why Facebook also banned my post. Oh. All right, because they don't, they don't want word, that, that was in that article, they don't want word getting out that they're responsible for targeting the teenagers with pornography, but they are. They are doing this. So it's very hard for a young person to uh, not be wanting to press that button. Right. As they're scrolling through their Facebook. So it is insidious. These people are insidious. I say the word people loosely because they are demons. Right. Really. <laughs> right. And our kids are in danger. And of course, our, our lives are at risk. As you said, Paul, you've been affected by this uh, my in whole, your own life. My <laughs> whole generation. My whole generation. We grew up with that. We got Kinsey when we were 14 or 15. And then on and on and on, and uh, it, it was normal, you know, it, it was just normal sexual activity, but uh, very dangerous. It is not, it's, it's not normal, and um, it's, it's highly satanic, actually. If we understand that pornography is being used as a weapon, 
It's a Luciferian weapon. So, for example, there's a story where the Israelis went into Palestine and blew a bunch of stuff up and took over the television station and started pumping pornography into the homes into the homes of the Palestinian people 24-7. Now, keep in mind that the, these are Muslim people. They're very, very reserved um, with their sexuality. Keep in mind that the children could not leave the house because things were being bombed. Right. and um, Of course, people couldn't sleep while this was going on. And all they had was pornography being blasted into their homes. All right, so they're, they're doing this to degrade. Um, it's, a, it's like a genocidal thing. They do it to degrade a people, to degrade a culture, to degrade um, sacred expression right. of sexuality, uh, and to degrade the way that we create life, you know, and turn it into this debased, carnal thing which is not the Creator's design. It is not. I mean, the Creator, the real Creator, I'm not talking about the ones that the Jews and the Christians are worshiping, this deity Yahweh or Jehovah of the right. Bible is not the real Creator. Uh, but the real Creator waits patiently for us, you know, to try to remember that when we bring our bodies together, especially because we're interested to create life, all right, we are doing something extremely heavenly, prof profoundly meaningful, right? Something that's deep and beautiful. But not if we're doing it just because we feel like having an orgasm, where we're shortchanging ourselves and we are shortchanging uh, the creator, basically, by making crap out of this life created energy, just turning it into something pathetic. Let me say one more thing. You know, an orgasm is a physical sensation. It's fleeting, right? It's normally incomplete, right? People, especially women, will have orgasms and sometimes they'll cry when they're done having this physical experience. And I think this is because they instinctually are coming up feeling the emptiness of just that, you know, just the physical part of it. When you, when you listen to the, to the words of mothers that have given birth in a blissful, love-filled way, they speak of what's called a birthgasm. And they talk about this experience, this physical experience, as not just being physical, but an opening happens as they're giving birth, that they are like totally in communion with the divine mind, that they are part of the universe. They are the universe. They are all that is. And they speak of this birthgasm as complete, much more complete than any orgasm they ever had with their husband just because they wanted to get off, you see? So we have been denied this. We have been denied this experience of grace that comes through the union of people who are approaching each other from a spiritual place and especially the place of wanting to create life in the image of the real creator, wanting to bring a special child on this planet. So we um, don't hear about that in sex education. We don't learn about the spiritual dynamics of what we're doing or the spiritual dynamics of murdering our children through abortion, for example. We don't, they don't talk about these things. All they're talking about right now is how to have physical pleasure. Right, and make doesn't matter who you have it with or what what creature you have it with. It could be an animal, like a horse. Right. It's all good. <laughs> Perfectly fine. <laughs> um, so they're doing everything in their power to prevent us from accessing the grace of a real union. Well, you can see why. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
I just want to know if I make sense. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. It's it's really hard to get your mind there because we've been conditioned all our lives to think of it as childbirth is arduous and you need to have a saddle block uh, and it's and it's really, really horrible. And uh, that having sex is the pleasurable part and you do it for pleasure. You know, it and a child is a is something that if it's created, it's a problem. And I mean, we've gone 180 degrees from the, the divine exactly. nature of the of the sex act and, and getting um, sex rituals down into the public. I think that's probably what it is, because we know that the Luciferian uh, occultists, the ones that run the planet, do sex rituals. Um, you know, they we've interviewed people where they they kill small babies, they drink blood. I mean, there's, it's a horrible ritual. And uh, some people say that it's because there are entities outside of our outside of this realm that uh, gain power from this or gain pleasure from this. And so what they've done with this pornography is they've they've made it uh, human wide. They've 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 created a a place where we're all contributing that luge to the to the demons. Exactly. You know, there's an interesting uh, quote in the Ringing Cedars books. If people haven't read these books, I highly recommend people read them. But she talks about when a, every time a man reaches what she calls satisfaction, she doesn't like the word orgasm, an entity gets created and that entity does not have a chance for embodiment and it suffers immensely because it doesn't have a chance for embodiment. So you, me, all of us that have participated in these sort of vulgar and debased expressions of human sexuality have participated in the creation of entities that don't have a chance for embodiment, that are suffering and that may be feeding off of this, these this debased activity. sexual activities, you know, I, I don't know if that's what's happening, but um, that could be part of who is feeding off of this. Now, right. it's an interesting concept because when, um, when you take the fluid that comes out of the man's body, right, it's clear that this is like creating. Right. Fluid. This fluid contains all the sperm and, you know, all the things necessary for the creation of life. It's supposed to be, you know, in there meeting with the egg right. if it was done in, in a sacred way. But instead, it's just released into space. And she, you know, she mentions that this is energy, right? The, the intensity of the energy that builds up in a man's body and the speed with which it gets released, right. um, that energy has to, it's transformed. It doesn't just disappear. Okay. So it is transformed into an entity. Wow. In space. So we're, we're surrounded by that at this point. There's gazillions of them because of how mankind is behaving sexually. So part of the, you know, part of the blessing in doing a talk like this and sharing this with people is people can become aware of this and maybe change their behavior as a result of what we're discussing, right. you know, and we can get a, hand, get a handle on it and try to come back home to the creator and to the energy of love uh, and get in alignment with that energy of love. There is no question that when a child is conceived, in love, purposely, between people that really love each other, that the births are ecstatic, they are extremely pleasurable, and that women are having what we could call orgasmic waves. They're having waves and waves of physical pleasure roll through their body in the middle of labor, right? One woman described it, she says, they call them contractions, but in no way did I feel contracted. I felt wow. totally expanded. Cool. Okay? So she calls them expansions. Even the language that we're using is counteracting 
what's yes. happening really yes so but women women who are in a spiritual place who are conceiving gestating and birthing from a spiritual place are sharing a language with us that we need to pay attention to because i don't hear it anywhere else except from these women what are these women that like this, stand, right okay. they from the ringing cedars book or do you have another source um, I don't know if these women have read the Ringing Cedars books or not. When I first joined Facebook in 2010, I created a page, a group, called Ecstatic and Orgasmic Birth. Oh, and nice. women just voluntarily started sharing their experience with, with me on, in the group and with the group, both good and bad. And so I kept those quotes because I'm writing a book. I knew I'd be writing a book about, uh -huh. about what I'm talking to you about today. Um, so I kept these quotes because I knew that I would be using them later down the road. And these quotes are very significant for us to begin to understand the truth of creation and what is possible. It's, it's really interesting because what you're doing is you're goring the sacred elephant. <laughs> that's, that's why they don't want, I mean, that's their source of power. We've said it when we've done broadcasts on pedophilia, um, and uh, uh, satanic rituals. We've covered all that. We've interviewed, uh, we've had interviewed parents who've had children who were sexually abused in these cults. Um, and, and so we know that we're deep into the, the bowels of, of where they want to take us. It's not much further yep. till they get us to the place they want us. <laughs> And you're scoring that element, okay. elephant. But for us to conceive of what it would be like, I know uh, when uh, Mindy read the Ringing Cedars books, we talked about it, and uh, it was so it was such a different orientation toward sexuality and childbirth. It was it was so beautiful, but to change even someone, uh, I don't know. Uh, a young person to to reorient themselves that way. I think it might be easier for women. I, I don't know. What do you what do you think? How can we turn the corner here? Well, for me, I'll tell you the truth, Paul. When I read the books, I really began to understand uh, the ugliness of what I was doing, what I was participating in. And I'm speaking to you as someone who lives in Hawaii and perceived herself as a sexual priestess. Okay, right. so I was involved in some very, um, I will call it Luciferian uh, expressions <laughs> right. of sexuality um, during this time. And then I got, I read the Ringing Cedars books. And it took me about three years after I read those books to really integrate what she said and put it into my life. Okay, so I have been celibate for probably about at least eight years now, I would think. I'm not exactly sure, but about eight years because I have made the determination to only engage that energy. Um, hopefully for the purpose of creating life. Now, I know that I'm close to 60, and it's, it, it would not be likely in our right. perceived mind for a 60-year-old to conceive a child, but I don't accept cultural belief systems, and I do think I still can. And really, it's what I want to use my energy for. I don't want to use it just to have an orgasm. I don't think that, that what we call lovemaking is that. Okay, I think it's a mockery of me when two people come together and they just want to get off and really that's what they want to do um, they're not they're not doing this for any other reason except they want a physical experience and we say oh you know it's so we're sharing love and yeah. you know my last boyfriend used to always say to me give me some love but he was right. talking about sex sex yeah okay um, and that's not the same thing if i i am so committed after reading the ringing cedars books to at least attempting to experience the fulfillment of love and to pre have that love preserved for the rest of my life, that it's worth it to me to hold this energy, 
not be so sloppy and let it all over the place, but to hold it for the purpose of creating life and to hopefully in that creation find the keys to the preservation of love between two people. And we take our love into eternity through the creation of life. You see, that's how profound this act is. And love is important. You know, I can't think of anything more important. So it's easy for me now. Of course, I haven't met anybody that I'm even remotely right. interested in. Yet, so. <laughs> but I have, I have had experiences of love, which means I know physiologically how love feels. I know that love can be triggered through eye contact, for example. I know that my whole body can just swell with absolute feeling of well-being and deep, deep and profound love that is, you know, orgasm is like this big and compared to what love feels like. And I, right. I have felt both. So I'm, I'm telling you from experience. Um, so I don't need this, this right. little bitty thing called an orgasm. It's a piece of crap compared to what I really would like to experience and what I would encourage other people to be shooting for in their lives instead of this right. little organic. Okay? So, so what, the first thing to turn the corner is this book you're writing. Um, yeah. Because it's going to describe people who actually have adopted this uh, through their sexual activities, no, mostly for their childbirth. Um, I don't know if they've adopted the Ringing Cedars mindset or not. I do know that some of them have conceived their children consciously and have given birth to them consciously. I'm not sure if that's because they read the Ringing Cedars books or not. Um, it's a question. <clears throat> but I do know, you know, some of these women just have um, very loving partners and very loving relationships, and they understand the importance of conscious conception and of giving birth at home. And they have had profound experiences in childbirth as a result. So I don't know if that's connected to the Ringing Cedars. Um, I will be traveling to Russia very soon, and I will be visiting some kin's domain settlements. It would be wonderful. I'm going to be visiting the um, Shetan in school where these children are being um, educated from a spiritual perspective. So I may meet people who have... Um, conceived and gestated and birth children according to the Ringing Cedars. Uh, I don't know what to call it. According to the Ringing Cedars idea, right. you know, of how to do it. And that would be wonderful if I could include those kinds of stories in my book. For now, the stories I have are just women who've had ecstatic births and conscious conceptions. Great, great. Right. And fathers. Right. Because I keep thinking of, to get us from where we are, which is in a horrible place, to, yes. to back to the, the Ringing Cedars talks about a woman who was raised in the woods and her conceptualization of sex is to create children. And so uh, linking up with her sex partner, he was surprised uh, that she asked for sex, but she asked for sex because she wanted a child, right? She never asked for sex. What happened and what she very strongly stresses is that a woman should never cave into a man uh, based on his carnal impulses. The only time she should ever let a man near her is if he's having a thought about creating a child with her. And so because of how Anastasia lives, which is in the Siberian forest and <clears throat> apart from the technological world, she's completely telepathic. And she knew when Vladimir was having a thought to create a child with right. her. And it was at that time that she rolled over and they began to make the child. Um, to this day, Vladimir never says a word about um, what the sex act was like, or I won't even call it a sex act because it's really an act of co-creation. It's really an act right. of creating life. It's not sex as we think of it. But the next morning after they conceived this child, he had sensations that he never experienced before. Everything 
in the forest looks so magnificently uh, beautiful, colors he had never seen, feelings of well-being that he had never achieved despite having lots and lots of sex. He never felt those, those feelings of overwhelming goodness and beauty and love except for that time when he conceived his child with Anastasia. Wow. Very and that's something we should also think about. And he talks about it as erasing all the bad things that ever happened to him. It's as if all of the evil that he had experienced all his life was gone because of this one powerful thing that he did, which was to co-create life with her. Wow. So that's, yeah, you should, I mean, if people would read that part of the book, I don't remember exactly which book it's in, one of the, one of the first three books for sure, how he describes it is very profound. And wow. that's something we should also be interested to attain. I would like to experience that goodness. I would like to experience that beauty in the world. I would, you know, love to have all of the horrors of my life be washed away in a, in wow. a sweep of energy of love so big, you know? Amazing. So this, we're talking about something that's immense. It's immense right. what is possible for us. Um, and what is rarely, if ever, discussed. Right. And I also, so, I'm so glad we're talking about it. <laughs> right, I'm so interested in it. And I think uh, this also gives women a different role. I mean, women, the, women aren't like other animals, which is what they want us to believe, that we're just another animal and, and you can have sex with animals or you can, you know, you have feelings like, well, you don't. Women are the only female that says no. And that's a way of patrolling who she brings into the world, the life she creates. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very powerful position that women have now that's being taken away. Because saying no now would be sacrilegious or inconceivable. I mean, we're just, <laughs> we're just animals. You know, what was that? There was a song that went, uh, you and me, baby, we're nothing but mammals. Let's do it like they do on the Discovery Channel. It, yes. that's, that's, not, <laughs> that's not what it's about. That's not what it's about. What a crude, crude, uh, a crude, crude expression. But yeah, they are trying. I mean, of course, Kinsey was very influential in this perspective about the human female, um, and women have really bought into it, hook, line, and sinker. And I did too. You know, up through my 40s, I was a sex object. Okay, I presented myself as a sex object. Um, I thought, you know, if I presented myself that way, that I would get love. And I couldn't have been more wrong. <laughs> right. You know, it attracts just the opposite. So uh, it attracts people that wanted to have sex with me, that wanted to have a physical experience, uh, but it never attracted authentic love, unfortunately. So something for women to think about. If we're going to be using the charms of our bodies to attract men, we're going to suffer. But also the men are going to be pissed off because they're being manipulated by women. Even if women are unconscious about this, um, men are being manipulated uh, to want to have sex with them. And children get created and people end up getting married and a lot of false unions are generated as a result of what we're doing. And of course men are conditioned to uh, I'm not saying this is how they are, but they are conditioned to be attracted to women that are trophies, women that, that are objects, women that are in empty vessels, women who are not a spiritual match. And what? they suffer as a result of being attracted to these um, empty vessels Yeah, it's that look good. Yeah. It's really tragic. And it's, it's even more tragic for the kids today because, you know, we have young girls sexting, uh, sexting, meaning they're sending naked pictures of themselves to boys at 12, 11, you know? 
The boys are demanding it. The boys are demanding anal sex because they see they see it in pornography and they think it's normal. Uh, a lot of the girls are um, talking about the physical violence that they're experiencing sexually as a result of the boys being conditioned through pornography. So uh, we have a serious situation for the young people, and it's very, very sad. And um, I would love to be able to talk to young people, but unfortunately, I think maybe I'm a little too intent or something. Uh, I don't know how to present this to young people, or I don't even know where the door would be for me to have the talk with young people. But at the Free Your Mind conference, at least there was a, a lot of young people there in their late teens, early 20s. So they got to hear my talk. I put my ass on the line, I got to tell you, because um, <clears throat> I had uh, trolls, has Barra trolls come out before the conference and really attack me, saying I was a racist, uh, you know, uh, anti semite blah, 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 try to prevent people from attending my talk at Free Your Mind or even get them to cancel my talk. Uh, but the room was full, nonetheless, when I did <laughs> give my talk. And um, it is all over YouTube at this point. So the, the information is getting out there. And the room was electric. It, I got to say, people were just like, oh, my God. If you like what when we're doing, go ahead. Go ahead. If you like when what we're doing, they change. Right. What, what did the what did the what did the, did you talk to any of the young people there? Did they did they uh, what did they say? We you talked to many young people. Many young people just. I mean, I talked to people of all ages there. I'm always uh, quite taken with the men in particular. Um, who so willingly share their hearts and their pain uh, about the things that I've discussed during both of my talks at Free Your Mind. Um, but the young people are, you know, they were like, one of them came to me and said, my mother was right. I'm so embarrassed, you know? <laughs> All right. I'm so embarrassed. And now I realize that my mother was right. And another one brought her mother over to me because she attended with her mother this conference. And um, they were both sharing their experiences of my talk. And um, I have many people sending me emails as well. So I have to say that there's many, many men in particular that are responding to what I'm saying. And um, this is a good thing, because our instinct is to think that the women are going to be the ones to change. Right. But I think the men, see, when a woman gets it, like I've got it, okay, there's no way that there's going to be mixed messages when I'm talking, because I really got it. Um, they're going to pick that up, and they're going to get it. You know, people can understand and feel truth. Right. And... Yes, and so the men are also going to get it. Anastasia does says when the women realize the truth, the men will begin to change. And this is what's happening. So the men also are changing just because some women, like myself, really get it. Amazing. That's why it's so important for me to do these talks. You know, I feel like there's nothing more important for me to be doing uh, next to trying to create my garden and caring for the earth and the creatures in it, on it, um, talking to people about this stuff is the most important thing I could be doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. They, they know that, too. Not only did they try to shut you down, I can tell people that we had this interview scheduled for last week, and uh, <laughs> we had it scheduled for 3 o'clock, and five minutes to three, no internet down here. And it's just, I mean, they were laughing because they, they tried to foil us again. But this is such a critical talk. Uh, this is such a critical subject. It's hard to, it's hard to talk about. It's, it's not an easy thing, and it's not an easy thing to get people interested in. But it's, it's the elephant in the room. If, if we don't stop this, the sex cult will have their way forever, I guess. One of the things I, I think that's extremely important to share about, or two other things, are the spiritual dynamics of sodomy 
and the spiritual dynamics of what they're doing in pornography. Can we go into those topics? Yeah, please do. I, I let me let me uh, start it off by saying I saw a poster, a Common Core poster in fifth grade, uh, and it had a list of ways to show affection. And on oh, that yeah. list was anal sex. Yeah. I just wanted to start Usually you off with I, that one. I think on the list was anal sex twice. I think they had it twice. <laughs> <laughs> do it and then do it again. It's on the list. <laughs> anal sex, anal sex, uh, uh, you know, yeah, they are really perverting everything. I want to stress that um, what's being brought into the schools is pornography. All right, it is being brought in to children as young as four and five in kindergarten. There's no doubt that showing a kindergarten child an image of an adult stimulating a baby in a crib with an explanation of orgasm underneath this, this is pornographic, okay? And this is programming. This is mind control programming of children. Now, with pornography uh, on the internet that our teenagers are watching, that our very young teenagers, younger than teenagers. Um, I want to read you a couple of quotes from people that have worked inside the industry. Okay. Okay. This one says, I am not exaggerating by stating that many Los Angeles porn industry professionals are Satanists and have the intention of destroying those who believe in God. I'm not sorry about that. Another no person says in, in porn, the producers and the film editors who edit the final cut for the public cast spells into the final cuts. And these spells are to cast demons into the video itself, which means every time somebody puts that video on, demons are being released, released. into their life, into their homes, into their bedrooms, into their marriages. Okay, a survivor of satanic ritual abuse says... When Bob and other Satanists were creating child pornography and other forms of pornography as well, they considered that what they were doing was a magical ritual. Alistair Crowley called it sex magic. They considered the creation of pornography to literally be a satanic ritual in which Satan would give them power in the world. All right, pornography is created with an intention which is the Luciferian manipulation of the psyche of the viewer. Pornography can be compared to the use of voodoo dolls, to establishing a psychic connection with the viewer to demonically influence them and to block their connection with God. Amazing. All right, let me read you one more page. The porn industry is well aware and use the demonic side to infiltrate porn. Whether the actors are aware or not, many orgy scenes are in fact rituals. But you will never see when the actors and directors meet at 6 a.m. in the morning, drink their potions, and cast their spells before they start recording for the public. All right, so what, when I say that pornography is a Luciferian weapon, I'm not kidding. They are casting spells into the films so that demons will influence the lives of the people that watch it. And if you are addicted to pornography and you are um, having like a constant image of a woman or a man in your mind, that is an incubus or a succubus who is, who is wanting to control you, wanting to lure you in again and again into the demonic realms with your sexual activities. Wow. And that is not a safe place to be. The demonic realms is not a safe place to be. Okay, for you to have a happy life, you're going to need to break the addiction to pornography, without a doubt, and to expel these demons from your world. It's much more dangerous I also than... Want much more dangerous than what? addiction to alcohol or, or, any, or any drug. I mean, and there are plenty of places to help you get off of those addictions. But this, this being in a, this was framed, even in a health class, as normal, everybody does it. 
Don't worry. I know some of, the, some of the girls are talking about, and some of the boys too, they'll have a sex ed lesson and they're literally watching porn in the schools. That's their sex ed lesson. Um, some of the people are very embarrassed, some of these kids. They feel ashamed by what they're being forced to watch and what they're being forced to do in the classrooms. You know, I mean, some of the kids are passing out. These are teenagers who are fainting Whoa. from the sex ed lesson because the sex ed lesson is so vulgar and disgusting that they can't handle it. It overwhelms their system. So this is what's going on. Uh, you know, it's not a safe time, I repeat, to have a, to have a child in school at any age. Right. Because the Luciferian taking over the school system, without a doubt, especially in the United States. I don't know what's going on elsewhere, but in this country, we're in trouble. In the UK, <laughs> in the UK they say it's the same thing. I've talked to people. Oh, uh, yeah. And also, to protect this vulgarity, this pornography in the curriculum, they don't have it as a separate thing now. They have put it into English class, as you read the thing you read before, and math class. So you can't, so, so if parents object, stop teaching my, I, or I'm going to keep my kid out of sex education, can't be done because it's, it's hidden in this, this other curriculum, which is, which is dumbing them it's down to begin with. Yeah. It's that holy serpent. Yeah, it is. You know, stirring its way in insidiously <laughs> into areas where parents can't see it, you see? Right. But the children are repeatedly exposed to it. It's disgustingly evil. It's pure evil. Right. Are there... Yeah. Are there... The other thing... Go ahead. One other thing is that the other thing that's pure evil that people need to know about is sodomy. Okay, if yes. I could read you a couple of things about sodomy from a survivor also. Um, he says, sodomy is the foundation of the satanic order. It's called the Key of David by the Rothschild Illuminati. Anon. In the Illuminati, sodomy is Satan's sex. Okay, the, Illu the Illuminati is Lucifer's church, the mystical body of Satan, and sodomy is like being born again. According to these psychopaths, the initiation into the light of Lucifer is achieved by sodomy of a three-year-old. Sodomizing a three-year-old is the beginning requirement for that child to rise up into the higher levels of the Illuminati. People think of the Illuminati as a political organization, but really it's a brotherhood of sodomites. Yeah. Sodomites are a family bond, whether they're related or not. Okay, as I said, it attacks the nerves at the base of the spine, and it causes something neurological to happen within the brain. It changes the way the mind works, and it affects the person's mind in a way that nothing else will. Exactly. So that for the person to develop, to be able to develop multiple personalities, they would have to be sodomized between two and four. All right, and the last thing I want to say that Marion Knox shared with us, he said, sodomy has a spiritual component in it that is far more sinister than anybody recognizes. It is the most underrated evil to the general public. Right. But to the people who are in the know, this is the ultimate rebellion against God himself. This is what they hope to use to gain the whole human race for their side and defeat God himself. Right? For those who don't know, that's what the Luciferian Rebellion is all about. It's all about becoming gods in ourself and not viewing the Creator as the Creator. Exactly. It's all about giving a big fuck you to the entire order of the Creator's beautiful love-filled design. It's all about poisoning and polluting and destroying everything that is good and beautiful. And they're cheering every time we participate in Luciferian expressions of sexuality. Wow. It's a great, it's a great achievement for them. And it's greatly uh, diminishing us and our children. That, that was the most beautiful 
paragraph I've ever heard spoken, the most <laughs> true, the most right on target. Wow, <laughs> that was really inspiring. <laughs> we should we should start this with that that quote. That's that's just really be because it's right on target. That's exactly what they're happening. That's why it's in schools. That's why the LGBTQPB community is is is. It's just a preference. Just a preference. Right. No problem. Just a preference. But then it's biological. Now they're arguing, you know, it starts in the womb. Well, that's because they're mind controlling babies in the womb. That's because <laughs> they're doing satanic rituals so that these babies will have altered personalities before they even come out of their mother's bodies. Exactly. Seriously. They're trying to cover their tracks and saying it's biological instead of that it's a function of satanic ritual abuse. But I'm going to tell you, that homosexuality is not part of the natural order. Transgenderism is not part of the natural order. These are not what the Creator designed for people to be. These are a function of mind control and abuse. And of course, it can be a combination also with the use of chemicals and drugs. Yes. You know, so they're using oxytocin, the same drug that they're giving pregnant mothers during labor. Okay? They are using that to get to get animals to prefer having sex with corpses. Whoa. And to, and to prefer having sex with uh, members of the same sex. So yeah. ph pharmaceutical drugs are being used, especially oxytocin, synthetic oxytocin. Amazing. And that, I know and that that's, that's causing the transsexual problem, if it's a problem. Um, and I... I you know, I always thought my whole life, well, our whole society accepted uh, gay sex and gay people mostly because of the Kinsey Report. And what Kinsey did, is he established that 10% of the population was inherently gay. Well, the reason how he did this, because I saw the survey, he asked you mm -hmm. questions that were related to, well, you know, have you ever... Um, liked to have a have a uh, closer relationship with a member of the same sex. Did you, did you ever, and all these ambiguous questions, uh, and then he would pick the ones that he decided or how many you'd pick right, that would uh, put you in the homosexual category. And I think that I would have scored homosexual on his test because there are just so many wow. ambiguously worded things. So he comes up with this thing that, well, 10% of the population is homosexual. Well, I'm not sure back then it was. I don't think it is either. I think it's about 1% to 3%. Um, and it's not natural. It is not something that the Creator uh, has designed people to be. It doesn't contribute anything to the natural order of creation. On the contrary, as I just expressed, um, it is a very dark, sodomy especially is a very dark act, and homosexual men engaged in a lot of sodomy get diseases. I mean, it's a filthy practice, and disease is rampant in the male homosexual community because of sodomy. It's, a, it's really not only sodomy, but they do things like licking butt. Yeah. You know, they're teaching teenagers about licking butt and fisting, sticking their entire fist. I mean, there's, there's really debased expressions happening in the homosexual community. And this is not anything against homosexuals. So I think the homosexual and transgender population suffer enormously. I think there's enormous pain in these communities, emotional pain, because they don't understand why they are the way they are. You know, they, they may have been ritually abused and not remember you know, um, something obviously triggered them to have an attraction to a member of the same sex and want to put their penis in, a, in an anus. Well, there's been mega. Yeah, it's not something. No, there's been mega studies now that show that it's not a natural thing. That it's something that happens societally. You you become conditioned to it, and that's it's not up for grant. It's not a question. It's yeah. mega studies where they took all the studies over 20 years and it. It showed that it's not a natural thing. Now, you know, I know many. Well, a lot of people. Go ahead. A lot of people are presenting studies now that that say that it is biological and also that pedophilia 
is biological. All these poor pedophiles, sure. they're born this way. Obviously, it's a sexual orientation. Yeah. We should pity them. Yeah. <laughs> it's not because they've been abused or anything. <laughs> no. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, why don't you uh, tell people how they can get in touch with you and get on the bed, get on your um, Janice Barcelo bandwagon to get this thing turned around. <laughs> okay. We're going to do what we can with you. That's for sure. How can people get in touch with you, Janice? Please go to my website at birthofanewearth.com. It's a pretty mild website. If you go to my blog at birthofanewearth.blogspot.com, my blog is much more hard hitting than my website. And um, there's a tremendous amount of information on both sites, but my blog is very intense. I also have a YouTube channel, Birth of a New Earth, and a Jeannie Sparcello YouTube channel. Um, so you can find my videos there, especially my most recent uh, talk at the Free Your Mind conference on what our discussion today. Um, I have a DVD series on, on pornography and the manipulation of human sexuality for people that are interested. You can find that on my website at birthofanewearth.com. And I have written a book, which you can also find on my website about birth trauma and the dark side of modern medicine. Very cool. I would advise anybody who's, who's been interested in this and stuck out to the end, go and watch your Free the Mind conference. She was inspiring, to say the least. Uh, so thank you very much, Janice. You're fighting the good fight. Thank and, you. And we're so with you. You bet. Take care. Bye-bye. God bye. bless you guys so much. Bless you both. Bless you. Bye for now.